My name is Nick, and when I was 15, I found out my grandpa was a member of the Italian mob. My childhood was extremely normal, uneventful. I grew up in the suburbs of New Jersey, uh, and my grandpa actually at that point had moved from Brooklyn to California. When my father's dad left to go out to the West Coast, he didn't really talk to him. So by the time I was a kid, they had started to rekindle that relationship a little more. Uh, and so growing up, we tried to make it a point every summer to go out to California to visit my grandpa. My dad came from nothing growing up. When my grandpa left the family, he really didn't help them out at all financially, and my dad had a pretty rough upbringing. There were actually a few times when my dad was in college where my grandpa called him and said, I haven't been around and I'm sorry for that. How could I make it up to you? So my grandpa hooked him up with a car, hooked him up with rent money, and then my dad said after like two or three months, every single person he had given a check to started coming up to him and saying, do these checks bounced. Bounced checks and owing money are going to be a recurring theme, by the way. So I think at this point in his life, he did feel he was owed a little something, whether it was financial support or even fatherly love. And so going out there, I think, whereas someone might have been a little more, oh, you don't need to do so much for us. You don't need, he was kind of sitting back like, yep, We'll take this meal, we'll take this meal. You know, if you want to buy me a jacket, sure, why not? I was always blown away whenever we would go out west and visit my grandparents. My grandma always dressed to the nines in this huge house with my grandpa. High ceilings, everything, like there's art pieces on the wall. I didn't really know exactly what my grandpa did for a living. And my dad kind of listed all these really random things. I think at one point he owned a pastry shop. I think he sold pies. He was in real estate or housing. But you know, of course, at the time I was like, wow, he was an entrepreneur, like, he did it all. And then when he got older and you know had less energy and had to settle down a bit more, he opened up a shop. I had just thought, wow, he must have accumulated so much, so much money and so much wealth over all these odd jobs he's had that he's just kind of able to sit in his shop and, and live a comfortable lifestyle. Whenever we'd go to California, we'd go to my grandpa's shop. Uh, he always seemed like he was just like head high in, in paperwork and documents. So I do remember being like, wow, owning a shop is a lot of work. When I was 15 years old, uh, my grandpa passed away. And I remember I just eating out somewhere at a restaurant and my brother, I have an older brother, he's obsessed, obsessed, obsessed with anything mob or mafia related. So The Sopranos is his favorite show, Goodfellas is his favorite movie, A Bronx Tale. So I remember he was going off about it, about some sort of Sopranos episode, some sort of killing, I don't know. And my dad kind of got excited and got the smile and was like, all right, I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna blow your freaking mind. And he proceeded to tell us that our grandpa, his father, was in the Italian mob. Okay, maybe he wasn't necessarily in the mob, but he was very involved and working with a very prominent Italian mob family that I will not name, but most people would recognize. He was one of those guys, small shop owner, who helped take dirty money and make it a little cleaner. Yeah, I just remember slowly connecting the dots in my head. Oh, oh. I remember my brother thinking, this was the coolest thing that has ever happened to our family. Like our family was nothing before we now had mob connections. And I remember like my first instinct was, who wants to kill us? Uh, and he did quickly reassure us uh, everyone at that point was either gone or out of the business. He said, ask your step grandma, ask your great uncle for stories. They'll be happy to share. And we did ask her, we said to our, to our step grandma, did you know the whole time? Were you ever worried? But she kind of made it sound like life was good. They had money. Did it really matter where it came from? And she never really got involved. And then at one point she told us these men came knocking on her door. And she opened the door and it's three or four big brawly guys in suits. These guys were looking like they were about to kill her. Where's your husband? She said, I don't know. We said, okay, he owes us this amount of money. You're gonna write us a check right now. She had an idea, like I said, of everything going on. So she writes the check, she hands it to the men, they leave. I'm guessing they went straight to the bank because a couple hours later, they show up at her house again, knocking. Still grandpa nowhere to be found. She opens the door, it's the same guy saying, this check bounced. If you don't get us a check, it must have been, you know, within the next 24 to 48 hours, someone's going to get hurt. And so I don't know when my grandpa came home, her husband must have been late night or the next morning. Uh, and she said to him, if something like this ever happens again, 
if a check bounces, if my life gets threatened, I'm going to leave you and I'm never coming back. But she unfortunately never was in that situation again. I'm guessing he paid off his debts, don't know what he had to do, but that was the only time she never saw those faces again. When my brother and I were prying all this information out of my grandma, it seemed to be this recurring theme that my grandpa always owed people money. Not just one person. There were like families that were dependent on my grandpa owing them money. And I remember one time she had told us that when he was really sick, uh, he was in the hospital, he was bedridden, like 20 to 30 people and a bunch of Italians, I'm not really sure who, all went to a church and prayed for my grandpa's health. Somehow this small shop owner, laundering a little bit of money, had 30 people praying in a church that he stays alive. Probably more people in that church than there were of my family praying. Everyone is a product of their family history. No matter how wacky and weird and somewhat dangerous your family history is, it is a part of who you are. Uh, and it's a part of what makes you the way you are. It defines your personality. Uh, it has an influence on your family, how you're gonna have teach your kids and their grandkids. So we can't erase what has happened. We can only use it uh, to better ourselves, to better our lives, to take the positive from it. Don't ever run from your family history. All the mistakes, all the successes, define who you are and define the history of your family for generations to come.